Hello friends, in this video, we're going to be looking at how to use options open interest to potentially give us clues on direction. It's important to note that you do not need to be an options trader to utilize this information because what the options information is telling us is what is going on or what is anticipated on the underlying stocks. So I can be a common share trader, but still use the option chain to try and get some information and some clues as to what's going to be going on. So we've all heard the saying, follow the money, and there's no better way to do that than looking at the options market where a little bit of capital can be leveraged to go a long way, and there are often very big bets placed on this options market, and it's able to be visible to all of us in order to see what these bets are that are being made. In this video, we're going to be going over what is open interest, how can open interest give us clues for the continuation of a trend, how can open interest give us clues for potential incoming reversals, some examples of this, and then a summary to wrap it up. So first things first, we need to distinguish what is the difference between an options open interest versus an options volume. Now the volume is the easy one. If we're familiar with trading stocks or cryptocurrency, we know volume can only go up and the volume is going to increase for every one contract that is created or changes hands. And every single day, we start with a fresh clean slate of zero until the trading day kicks off. Now, options open interest is going to be a little bit tricky and a little bit hard to grasp and wrap your head around. So I'm going to give an example after this to try and clarify a little bit more. So it shows the contracts that are still open. So if there's 200 contracts open yesterday and nothing changes, today there's going to stay 200 contracts open. So it's a bit of a more continuous measurement. Every new contract that is created, the open interest is going to increase. If a previously created contract that was created yesterday is passed on to another trader, that's no new contract creation, and the open interest is going to stay the same because it's the same contract that's floating around. It's just changing hands. There's no new contract. So open interest is essentially the contracts that have not been closed out yet. So it can go up, it can go down, or it can go sideways. And we use this to anticipate price action. So here's an example. We've got Bob over here. And we got Steve. So Bob writes a call for SPY. He thinks SPY is going to go down. He writes a call and he's looking to collect the premium from that contract creation. Steve buys this call and he thinks that SPY is going to go up. So a contract has been made. Bob created the contract. Steve purchased it. There's your contract. The volume increases by one. The open interest increases by one. So now Steve heads over and Steve was right. SPY went up. He made money and he wants to lock in his profit. So he wants to sell his call and Dominique here thinks that SPY is going to keep going up. So she's going to buy that call from Steve, hoping that it continues to go up and gets profit herself. So she buys Steve's call. It's the same contract that was created between these two. He's just handing it off to a new trader to lock in his profit. So a contract is traded. It was not created. The volume increases by one for that trade, but the open interest remains the same because no new contract was created. So now we're going to look at how we can utilize this information to look for clues, either continuation, affirming the price action, or signals of a potential incoming reversal as we are getting some divergence between what's going on with the open interest and the price action. In this instance, we're looking at continuation clues. So let's say we have increasing open interest in calls while the price is increasing. That shows us trend continuation and strength confirmed. So an example of that would be Facebook $150 weekly calls. The open interest is going up, meaning people are creating contracts, calls are being purchased, while the price is going up 1% on the day, bulls are anticipating continuation because while the price is going up, they're still buying those calls looking for further follow through. If the open interest in puts is going up and the price is decreasing, that shows trend continuation and bear strength because that tells us contracts are be being created, puts are being bought, and the price is going down at the same time. So SPY 265 puts for next week, the open interest increases as we see a four hour lower high and lower low follow through to new lows. Bears show continuation strength because again, these contracts are not closing out. They're seeing continuation of increasing positions, further contracts are being created. And now we're going to look at the opposite, divergence clues. So if we see 
flat open interest in calls and the price is going up, that's a bit of a bear divergence. That's a bit of a red flag that's telling us, hmm, the price is still going up, but people are not betting by buying calls that that's going to see continuation. So if the Facebook 150 weekly calls open interest is flat while the price goes up 1% from our previous example, the options activity is not confirming the bull strength. So we need to be a little bit cautious. That's a little bit of a red flag to take into consideration. If we have flat open interest in puts and the price is going down, that's a slight bull divergence because it's not confirming the price decrease, showing that bears are confident in continuation. They're not seeing puts being bought. So for the same example, SPY 265 puts for next week, open interest stays flat. And we see the four hour lower high and lower low follow through. There's a lack of bear confidence and we have to be cautious for the bears because again, the volume and the, and the trading activity in these options is not going hand in hand with what we're seeing on the price of the underlying stocks. And third here, we're going to have the most significant divergence clues, which is what we can use for potential trend reversals. So here we have decreasing open interest calls while the price is going up. That means these call contracts are being closed out while the price is still going up. And that tells us people are locking in their profit because they are anticipating that we are either going to stop going up or we're going to start going down. So if the Facebook 150 weekly calls open interest is dropping off while the price goes up 1% on the day, Confidence is declining and we scout for signs of a bearish reversal. So again, for me personally, if I'm trading common shares and I'm using these signals from the open interest, it's not necessarily enough to make me act on a trade, but it's enough to guide my attention and my focus and to know where to be looking. So if I'm looking at the price of Facebook going up 1% and it's all bull, but I see the little clue that the open interest in the calls are decreasing, that might tell me, Hmm, maybe I should start looking for a, a loss of a five minute uptrend to enter a bearish position and try and top fish. So again, I don't use it as an ultimate decision maker for my trades, but I do use it as a bit of an indicator, just like the RSI or the volume or anything else that I'm going to be using. So the other example, decreasing open interest in puts while the price is going down. So people are closing out these put contracts, the price is dropping. And it shows a lack of confidence in bearish continuation. So we scout for a potential reversal with the bull divergence. So the SPY 265 puts for next week, open interest is going down. While we're still seeing a lower high and lower low on the four hour time frame. bears are closing those puts and then we're going to scout for the potential of a bullish reversal. So we've got a lot going on on this chart. Let's just break it down. This top up here is the price of CGC. In December 2018, as we were dropping, so this is the regular old stock price. Down here, we have the option. This is a CGC $35 call that is going to be expiring the first week of 2019. And we are looking at the price action of the call, which is very highly correlated to the price action of the underlying ticker, the stock. So here we have the pullback. Here at the bottom, is the chart for the open interest of this call, the $35 CGC call. And what we can see is the open interest is slightly increasing on the way down of the price and the value of the option, and then it spikes. And the highest open interest that we see for this call is on the last red day. And then we have the gap down open and then the bounce that takes place for eight days from there. So that's a bit of an early indication. If we're seeing a spike in calls when the price is at its weakest, the price is at its lowest, there is no sign of a reversal at this point, and then the next day is the gap down, bullish reversal, start of the bounce, that was an early signal that the open interest was increasing while the stock price was continuing to decrease. So now let's check in just two weeks after that chart we just looked at. Here's the price of CGC. This is the candlestick right here where we saw the increase in open interest that was unusual because it was in the face of extremely bearish conditions. The next day was the bottom. We saw two weeks of slight uptrend action and then a big bull explosion, explosion of 50% in just a few days. So the indication of the calls going up while the price was going down was a clue to watch for a reversal. And then here again on January 10th, we saw a big uptick. These are the calls, the open interest. 
big uptick in the open interest of those calls while the price is going up significantly. So that tells us that even more people are writing call contracts. And you might be saying, well, these people are writing call contracts thinking the price is going to be going down or perhaps hedging against some of their common share bullish positions. And yes, that could absolutely be true, but it still has a lot of people buying these calls. That's why the open interest is being created because these co these contracts are being created. Someone's got to be a buyer of them. So the continuation of the increase in the open interest of this call contract while the price is seeing a significant bull move up tells us that there is confidence in continuation. And if we were to fast forward another four weeks after this, we would see that the price ran all the way up to $51 from the low in the upper 20s. So here we had the price in the upper 30s, right around $40. We got another signal that the bulls were confident in continuation, and we did end up seeing another 25% of continuation from this initial big bull move. So this is now a website that you can utilize for free as a resource. It's www.barchart.com slash option slash open dash interest dash change slash stocks. And what this tells you and what it allows you to do is to organize by the biggest increases in open interest and the biggest decreases in open interest. And it tells you whether it's a call or a put, it tells you which stock it's on and exactly which option is seeing all this spike in activity. So again, follow the money. If you're going to see insider trading, it's going to be on the options market. There are so many times where you can very clearly see huge, unusual activity right before news drops. So there are many times where follow the money can utilize these options markets for potential clues. So obviously, this is not an in-depth course on using open interest of options. But what we're doing is pointing to this potential tool and indicator that you can use. And now it's up to you to further walk down that path and enhance your education. And whether that's you know studying videos more on what exactly options are, what exactly is open interest, how do people utilize open interest in their trading, there's articles and videos out there. And then from there, you start to practice and paper trade and watch how these things trade. If GE has a huge spike in the open interest on these puts, look at the date that it expires. We're looking into March and then we can watch and track, okay, what does the price do now that we have this information? And you can look for, just like we went over, clues that indicate strength and confidence in continuation. If the price is going up and there's calls, open interest going up big time, that's the clue for continuation. If the price is going up and the open interest of calls is seeing some of the biggest decrease down here, that's a big red flag that we're looking for the potential of a temporary top to be set. So you want to write down and paper trade and practice and see, is this an indicator and is this a tool that I want to utilize in my trading game plans? So in conclusion, from here, we want to be able to understand what is options open interest. And from there, we want to be able to utilize liquid options with a lot of volume behind them, a lot of open interest, a lot of trading activity to determine, are we getting clues that continuation is likely or are we getting clues that there's red flags on the current movement and a reversal is likely. So again, just one more time, I'm not going to use this information to enter trades based off of. I'm going to already be looking at setups and then look for this information to potentially supplement or give me some extra clues as to what to be expecting. So if we have a name that's been running really hard and it's really overbought on all time frames, and I'm looking for a pullback, Perhaps I look into the op open interest of the active options, and if I see the calls, the open interest is starting to fade and starting to go down a little bit, then that tells me, get ready, start looking for a loss of the hourly uptrend to indicate that daily consolidation is coming. So again, play around with it. Don't just jump right in because options are difficult and watching these kind of things, you need a lot of practice and a lot of experience to get comfortable knowing what you're looking at. But again, just have it as something that you occasionally pull up and look at and perhaps look for clues at with how the options market is trading relative to what the underlying common stocks are doing. We appreciate you watching. Special shout out to our member Farm who helped put this presentation together. Best of luck out there and we'll see you next time.